Hey all here OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a quick look at the Nemo Mini PC. You guys may remember that a couple months back we checked out a laptop from them as well. This company is a newer brand, but they're interesting because they claim all their products are assembled in the US, so possibly supporting local labor and many of their products are also marketed towards students. In fact, you get some pretty interesting discounts available. If you have a student ID or a student email available, you're able to get up to 23% off, which is a pretty unique incentive, making them ideal for education, again, for college students to consider for office-related tasks. And this mini PC can connect to up to three external monitors, up to 4K resolution. It continues with a metal alloy construction for the shell, so feeling quite premium similar to their laptop as well, compared to plastic, which is what we usually see on computers at this price point, remains relatively affordable even at the official MRSP, selling for around $200 for a model that comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM as default, not to mention again with student discounts that you can stack on top to make it even more affordable. So a nice looking shell here as part of the design. They state that their brand is inspired by Finding Nemo, hence that clownfish logo here on the front, with top-line specs including Wi-Fi 6 support in addition to DDR5 RAM. The entire chassis is also quite slim at under 1 inches. It doesn't take up too much space on a desk, looks quite clean, and comes in a few other colors as well, such as this light blue version in addition to a rose gold pink. And because of that thin and lightweight frame, you are able to mount it onto the back of a TV or monitor, for example. So different configuration tiers include upgrading the storage up to 1 TB, for $60 more, also really not bad. $10 more can upgrade the SSD to double the capacity at 256 gigabytes, although the RAM is 16 gigabytes on all of those versions. And in terms of the processor, it's using the Intel N100, which is part of the Celeron line. It's again, relatively entry level, but at the very least energy efficient, can turbo up to 3.4 gigahertz, a quad core architecture that draws six watts of TDP. So again, for light computing tasks, it should be sufficient as long as your expectations are reasonable. And you have just some user guides, the actual mini PC itself. You'll also find a 36 watt power adapter that is using a barrel plug connection here, pretty standard stuff. There's also the Nemo logo printed on here, so good attention to detail, as well as some mounting brackets if you want to, again, pop it behind a TV or monitor. And now for a closer look at the design of the mini PC. Again, the unibody aluminum alloy frame definitely gives a nice heft and really premium touch. And then on the back here, all the I.O. are inclusive of a full-size Type-A USB 3.0 port, a full-sized HDMI, you have Ethernet as well if you want to use that instead of Wi-Fi, in addition to a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the other side, there is a second HDMI output, and then on the third edge, we have a USB Type-C port, in addition to a full-size SD card reader, plus two more full-size Type-A USB 3.0 ports, and of course the power key. So in total, there are 12 different connection ports, which I think is a fair amount of I.O., it is a very clean presentation overall, and there's some ventilation grills as well that will create some airflow and prevent the machine from overheating. The back here just features some soft touch rubber feet, mounting brackets on this unibody aluminum shell. Here it is next to kind of an average size smartphone, just for reference. But of course, this is a full blown Windows computer inside, which is again, quite impressive, all things considered. One of the best built mini PCs, in fact. That being said, one potential downside to having such a slim and beautiful unibody aluminum shell is it's not quite as easy to disassemble. You'd have to kind of pry out of plastic, so it's not quite as upgradable in that sense, where certain other mini PCs you can easily pop open the lid to change the SSD or the RAM yourself without more advanced or specialized tools. So for folks wanting even more flexibility, that might be a slight con to this, but ultimately it's very stylish. And the configuration tiers that are sold directly by Nemo are, I think, decent enough, such as, again, only $10 to upgrade the SSD into two times more. It doesn't bother me quite as much as with other companies like Apple, for example, that would charge you significantly more for additional storage space. So at least in terms of cost, again, the configuration tiers are not bad at all. It's just perhaps would have liked them to have a bit more of a modular design there to get open the front cover. It is undeniably beautiful and super solid in terms of the weight and finish, however. Let's take a closer look at the UI and performance. 
All right, so speeding through the setup flow as well as system updates, this was interesting because the entire process took around two hours before we could finally get into the Windows UI. Now, to be clear, I don't think the issue is necessarily with Nemo, but rather with Windows because of mandatory updates that had to be installed before we could finally use the computer. And your mileage may vary depending on how quick it takes for those updates to install, but I just find it interesting that the setup flow can vary so much from Windows computer to computer. For example, on this computer, during the setup, it told us to actually sign in to our Microsoft account, and if you didn't have one, you had to create one. It then went through a couple of pages where you could opt in or opt out of services like advertising, asking whether you needed any additional third-party apps to be pre-installed, or you can uncheck them if you don't want to install them. Also asking if you want to link your phone to your computer to see your messages from here. You can scan a QR code with your Android smartphone, for instance, as well as whether you want to back up the computer, restore it basically from another computer that you have if you've signed into the same Microsoft account on top of installing the mandatory Windows updates. And all of this is done before you're actually able to get into this regular UI. And so that entire process, again, was the longest that I've ever experienced out of a recent mini PC. Again, probably more of Microsoft's fault, but just a fair warning that on this machine, you definitely have to be a little patient on that initial setup. And my recommendation would be stepping away as the computer is just updating and doing its thing, and then come back to it a couple of hours later. But alas, we are in to the Windows 11 UI, and it's a pretty familiar experience. Everything is still quite clean. There's not too much customization going on, aside from one application that Nemo installed themselves called Computer Manager, and this just tells you components that they've used, as well as whether you want to contact customer service. I think this is a nice touch. It makes it easier for you to kind of contact them if you have any questions. But aside from this panel, everything else is just the standard Microsoft apps, including Office and utility tools. Again, Windows 11 these days also comes bundled with a lot of AI features such as Copilot that is just present here when you log in. And I suspect that's also the reason why it took a little longer for those updates to be installed. On this taskbar now on Windows, you're able to directly ask questions, basically leveraging ChatGPT, as well as even do AI image generation artwork, jump back and forth between different windows for multitasking, and also a bar here on the left that shows you some recommended news articles as well as widgets for things like weather. So all I can say is Windows 11 is no longer the lightest option operating system, at least compared to Windows 10 or Windows XP, which were just very clean. Uh, now you have just a few more things bundled in and different animations. So I guess it is at least impressive that a entry-level mini PC, again, the Celeron N100, it's able to keep up decently, even opening up some of these different tabs and menus. Animations don't feel too sluggish or slow. It feels decent as you're moving around. Now you can tell that out of the 1TB variant, you have around 915 gigabytes free for you to install other programs, which can be augmented using cloud storage, SD card, or a thumb drive on this particular unit if you need more. Again, Microsoft Edge is the default browser that comes bundled in, and to Microsoft's credit, this is now built on Chromium, so it's definitely faster as compared to the days of Internet Explorer. You can install similar extensions as Chrome, and performance isn't so far apart, plus it is relatively energy efficient. Some of the AI features are again touted with Copilot pilot and ChatGPT built into the browser as well. But if we take a quick look at the benchmark scores, again, the Celeron N100 is one of the most popular choices in mini PCs under $200 these days. So it's pretty tried and tested at this point, which is to say it's decent for a entry-level computer. It scores a little bit north of 5,400 on Passmark, and you can see how it stacks up against more powerful current generation i5, i7s, and the Apple M1 silicon. So you can tell that it's roughly three times less performant versus some of those more flagship grade processors, but at the same time, it is more performant versus entry-level mini PCs that came out just a few years back using chips like the Celeron M3450 or M3350. Scores a little bit under two thousand on Passmark, showing some incremental upgrades on Intel's part for their lowest end chips. And you can also see how it stacks up against older generation Core i3s or Core M3s. So it's kind of like using an older mid-range computer from a couple of years back. Doing some casual web browsing, it actually does a decent job, perhaps even a little bit better than some would give it credit for, considering those incremental updates. And again, it's no longer as slow or sluggish as some of the really old Celerons and Atoms, which had a 
notorious reputation. So this is thankfully already much faster than that, taking just a split second for some of these more complex pages to fully render with videos as well as scrolling elements. Reception quality also seems to be more than adequate. I was actually getting almost full bars, which is impressive considering it is a metal chassis. Loading times for web browsing and also consuming media still seems to be responsive enough. The version as configured here with 16 gigs of RAM, I was able to open up more than a dozen tabs in the browser and jump back and forth between them, and things are still mostly held into the system's RAM, doesn't feel too sluggish. Here's also a quick example of what office work feels like. Using Excel, you can enter various equations, pivot tables, and it does a fair enough job. Let's also jump into a quick video playback test. I'm gonna pull up stats for nerds, starting off here at 1080p resolution or full HD, and you can tell that the loading times are still quite fast, so this is going to be a good enough experience, honestly, for things like YouTube or Netflix if you're connecting it to a larger TV. But let's try cranking it up to 4K resolution here next. You have to buffer for a split second longer at the beginning, but as it starts to play back, you can actually notice still very minimal drop frames, whether it's local or streaming, and still seems to play back at a pretty smooth overall frame rate. Now, if you are pressing it really hard, you can definitely hear the fan kicking up a little bit more. That is primarily if you are playing back several 4K videos at the same time. It's going to have to be doing a little bit more work to keep the performance at a consistent level without throttling, uh, but overall it's not bad. I wouldn't say the fan is too loud, just a faint white noise in the background, and as you are doing less work, maybe with only one or two tabs or programs, it's going to become more quiet. So general performance is good despite the really slim chassis, and I guess the metal shell is also helping it stay a little bit cooler by dissipating some extra heat as well, in addition into the fan inside. So again, one of the benefits of a full Windows computer, as always, is you are able to leverage any legacy x86 program, driver, millions of desktop-based applications which are supported. So if there's more obscure software you're trying to run, or again, desktop-based tools, uh, that is going to be something you can take full advantage of on a regular Windows computer like this. Not to mention some more mobile-optimized apps in the Microsoft Store that you can find for things like social media, some games, and other productivity and utility tools as well. And for some casual creative work, it also mostly gets by, again, something we've touched on with other N100 mini PCs already, but if you're doing some light video editing, primarily in full HD resolution, it can still be an okay experience. For example, outputting a 10 minute edited full HD clip took me around five minutes on this particular computer, which is not bad, all things considered. And similarly, for some light Photoshop or image touch-ups, it can still be an okay experience here as well. Obviously, with 4K or 8K editing, it's not going to be the best experience with just Intel's integrated graphics graphics, but again, for casual usage, it's still all right. And similarly, for casual gaming, again, keeping things light, you can still get an okay experience. Here is Genshin Impact, for instance. Frame rates may not be smooth 24-7, but it's still playable. And similarly, here is Grid Autosport, which is actually doing a little bit better in terms of smoothness, as you can tell. So definitely still playable. And here's also Minecraft, especially if you lower the graphics settings on some of these titles. That being said, you might get a better experience emulating some older classics from consoles of yesteryear, whether it's Nintendo 64, PSP, Game Boy, so on and so forth, can definitely still run on a machine like this. Or of course you can try leveraging cloud gaming through services like Xbox's xCloud or Amazon's Luna if you want to try out more AAA style games, uh, but of course you have to get an internet connection that is reliable enough and this basically just acts as a portal using the keyboard and mouse. So that can be an alternative if you want to play back some newer titles. Alright, so that is more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Nemo Mini PC, the variant here with the aluminum metal shell. And I have to say, it's a pretty impressive showing for such a low-cost budget computer. Of course, it's not going to blow you away with the Intel integrated graphics, but for light computing needs like web browsing, office document editing, media playback, it handles those tasks really without any problems while looking really elegant. has very similar parts as well, it's just that, again, obviously this one has a built-in screen and keyboard versus this one requiring you to plug in your own, but provides even more compactness, even though technically the parts, including the processor, again, aren't anything that we haven't seen before. I think it's the entire package here, such as the attractive design and the interesting story of the startup brand catering towards students with extra discounts and based in the U.S., that I do think makes it quite interesting and perhaps deserves more attention particularly in the budget computing space. So you can check out more details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, that's been the Nemo Mini PC.